Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Mati Shmuelov. Uh, I'm very honored and proud to be a part of the performance and now the lecture and then the talk with uh, Joseph Sasson Semach. Um, I started with the last picture. Um, as you see, uh, Joseph has the, the, the head of his. Uh, Grandfather, the last rabbi of Baghdad, and, um, and we will talk about all the connection between these two images and two artists. And uh, we will, I hope, I'll try to unlock and tell more about the secrets hides inside of the performance art installation, interpretations, and knowledge of Joseph Sasson Semach. Um, Joseph Sassoon Semach's artistic sword criticizing, criticizes and unmasks the work of Joseph Beuys, the most influential German artist post World War II. In his criticism of Beuys' art, Joseph Sassoon Semach uses the term an oppressive memory. To my mind, he means how an oppressor performs, represents, re disguises himself as a victim, and by doing so, he silences. The victim. Boys, the big shaman of the German art, spoke of the famous legend of how he, his airplane was shot down and that he was saved by the Tatars. This is a myth that he created in order to make us feel com compassion to his deeds. Let us first take the facts. In 1936, Boyce was a member of Hitler Youth. We know that it was compulsory, but later, but later on, in 1941, Boyce volunteered for the Luftwaffe, the aerial warfare branch of the Wehrmacht during World War II. <clears throat> in 1942, Boys was stationed in Crimea and was a member of various combat bomber units. From 1943, he was deploy deployed as a rare gunner in the Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber. Initially stationed in Kuningrads, later in, in the Eastern Adriatic re region. On March 16, 1944, Boys' plane crashed on the Crimea front close to <coughs> Zanenaika. Record states that Boyce was conscious, recovered by German Nazi search commandos. There was no Tatars in the village. No Tatars. At the time, however, <coughs> Boyce was brought into a military hospital where he stayed for three weeks from March 17 to April the 7th. The research, text, performance, artworks, and installation of Joseph Boyce, of Joseph Sassoon Tsela today, is a Babylonian Jewish deconstruction of the artistic activities of boys from the center of Europe. In his artistic performance, Joseph Sassoon Tsela referred to two famous installations of boys. The first, Strasserband Hallstelle, tram stop, as we see here, that was unveiled at the Venice Biennale of 76, 1976, Joseph Boyce created a copy of a monument which was placed next to the tram stop in Cleve, consisting of a free <coughs> cannon crowned with a bust based on a figure of John Baptiste Clos. John Baptiste Clos was born in, 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 uh, in 1755 near Cleve at the castle of Gnadenthal, and later called himself Anarchistis Clause. He later joined the French Revolution and symbolized democracy. This is the head that uh, we can, you can read that it, uh, later on the student um, of boys uh, took him to trial and said that he stole the head, the, the, the statue from her. And, and this is Anarchist Clause. Um, that joined the French Revolution and, and symbolized democracy for uh, Joseph Boyce. 
Joseph Boyce's strong stop in 1976 is a matter of fact the memory of Boyce as a five-year-old <coughs> kid waiting for the train that will take him to visit his uncle who lived in Cleaver. Joseph Boyce explained that he used to cross the street and sit at the, at, in front of the monument named by the city as the Iron Man. At certain time, the field cannon was crowned with Cupid. You can see it here. This is the inspiration uh, for Boyce as, as he was five, going to visit his, his uncle in the city of Cleveland. So, the memory is love and the idea that democracy should be spread by the cannon and not war. In Cleve, not far from the tram stop, there was a Jewish synagogue that was destroyed by the Nazi troops during the Kristallnacht. And when you add the fact that Boyce himself was part of the Nazi Air Force, you get the story of recreating himself as a rebel figure, talking about democracy and high um, High values. Meanwhile, ignoring the authentic, the authentic victim while representing himself as a victim. I will explain that more. Joseph Sassoud Semar doesn't forget Cleaver's synagogue, as well as the real action of Joseph Boyce. He writes letter to Albrecht Dürer, another German artist, in order to penetrate the German and European canon and to bring back the lost Jewish voice. And I quote from uh, the letter that uh, uh, Joseph Sassoon Semach sent to Albrecht uh, Duer, and um, it, this, this was part of the performance we just saw, um, and one of the person was reading it um, completely, the whole letter. And you can read it also in his catalog and on the internet. And he writes, um, yeah. All in all, Joseph Boyce, Straßenbahn, Altele, Altstelle, Transport, uh, uh, 1976, is a physical. That is a real visible object in opposition, manifest, manifestation to be contemplated from afar. The result of the intolerable conflict of a false and true element in Joseph Boyce's ideology, which he tried to expand, to, ex to escape, as it were, from, the, from his impossibility, I mean, from his post-traumatic stress disorder into symbolic killer of post-war West Germany, and at the same time to foster his future reputation. In another famous work of, of art, Joseph Boyce planted 7,000 oak trees throughout the city of Kassel, each tree accompanied, accompanied by a basal stone as part of the seven documenta in Kassel, 1982. Joseph Boyce's idea was to breathe life back into the emptiness and rubble of 7,000 bomb holes that were left by the carpet bombing made by the Allies in World War II. So you see the oak tree and the stone. <coughs> Joseph Sasson Tsemach referred to the different theological resources, the Bible and the New Testament, to find the origin of the meanings of the number 7,000. And let me read you the first um, reference, Kings 1, 19 um, to, to uh, 17, 17 to 19. And it shall come to pass that he that escaped this world of ha ha Hazael shall Ye Yehu slay, and him he tried to escape from this world of Yehu shall El Elisha uh, slay. And yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all needs which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouse which had not kissed him. And let's see also the second uh, reference of um, Joseph Sassoon Sema from the New Testament, Romans 11 to 4. But what said the answer of God unto him? And I reserved myself to myself, seven, seven thousand men who have not bowed in the knee of the image of Baal. <clears throat> Joseph Sasson Tsemach uses these two resources in order to recapture the real essence of the number 7,000. He also uses the, an additional theological resource to the capture of the essence of 
the essence of the oak tree and the stone from the Old Testament. The Bible tells, tells us about the oak and the stone, Joshua 24. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he established for, for them a statue and ordinance, recorded this thing in the book of law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was near a sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, You see this stone, it will be witness against us, for it is heard all the words the Lord has spoken to us, and it will be witness against you if you ever deny your God. So this is the 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 um, the work of uh, of boys that you see the oak trees and the stones that he did in castle in, uh, as a remembrance of the oaths that uh, left by the allies. This is uh, Joshua um, doing the um, doing the the the, um, the covenant with God uh, from the Bible uh, as the illustration. You see the stone and the seven thousand people and the tree, the oak tree. And this is um, the the work, the Talmudic work. You know, the Talmud is one of the most uh, sacred uh, books of the Halakha, of the Jewish wisdom, and that was uh, one. There's two parts of it. One was written in Babylon, uh, and one uh, today Baghdad, and one in, in in Palestine to the Israel. And you see how he writes in Hebrew and also in English. Uh, all these. In, uh, this is Joseph Boy, uh, Joseph Sasson Semel's work. How he he writes his interpretation like Talmud, and you can see the oak tree and the stone. And today we did, before you came, a performance outside of the Goethe Institute, and Joseph Sassoon Zemach planted the oak tree while reading these verses that I just read to you in English. And the, the, there will be also a, a, a stone from Jerusalem that will be brought here to the garden of the Goethe Institute in Amsterdam. Uh, to put next to the oak tree as a covenant with God, and I will explain now more what I mean. To summarize my ideas until now, I want to contextualize why we are doing the action of planting an oak tree and placing it next to the stone originated from Jerusalem. Joseph Sasson Semach wants to create a real new covenant with God, not the God of the scripture, but the spiritual one. He reclaims the Jewish symbols which boys appropriated, and recreates a new symbolic order on the land of Europe. It's both artistic moment and a spiritual one, both happening here on the, the, the European ground. Boyce refers to Cleaver with nostalgia and at the same time forgets about the crystal nest and his involvement in World War II. Boyce also re referred to the, buzzer, the bombing, bombing of the castle and forgets that it took place in order to defeat the Nazi troops and to stop the destruction of the Jewish European life. In his position, boys appropriate the victim voice, but Joseph Sassoon Semach reclaims it and recreates a new alliance with God, using the old meaning of the oak tree and the stone here in the garden of the Goethe Institute. Now, let's go to the second part of my talk, which is also second, um, second kind of identity and part of, of the work of, of, uh, of uh, Joseph Sassoon Tzemach. Joseph Sassoon Tzemach, deconstruction of boy's art is also another dialogue that he con conducts as an Israeli Jew who immigrated to Europe. Um, of course, Israeli Jew with Iraqi origin, as I already <coughs> mentioned, that is, is, a, is Upa, is a, a grandfather, is the last rabbi of Baghdad. I'm also an Iraqi Jew, so it means a lot to me that we have this dialogue between us and, uh, and also to, to, to jump into his work and I will also refer to it with my questions soon. I will explain you this picture in a moment. In his artistic performance and installation, Joseph Sassoon Tzema criticizing the admiration of Israeli artists towards boys. In his insightful article, Dr. Kobi ben Meir writes about Joseph Boyce and the cultural effect of the Israeli art of the 70s. 
I will use some of his ideas in order to reflect upon Joseph Sassoon Zermach's sharp artistic and poetic response to the Israeli admiration of boys' arts. The Art School of Bezalel. Boy, at the Art School of Bezalel, which is in Israel, in Jerusalem, if you don't know, it's one of the famous or maybe the most famous art school in Israel right now, and also from the start of the 20th century back then. Uh, it was a symbol also of Zionism, of the re, uh, recreation of Jewish life in Palestine. Um, at the art school of Bezalel, Boyce became a revered hero, and the Israeli artist made a pilgrim to his studio in Düsseldorf. The non-Israeli artist, David Ginaton, which you see here, this is David Ginaton, and this is a work of art of David Ginaton, which I'll explain in, in a minute. The non-Israeli artist, David Ginaton, says that he first heard about the beginning of the Yom Kippur War as he was traveling by a train to Düsseldorf. As soon as they arrived, he and his wife uh, to Düsseldorf on the second day of the war, on October the 7th, 1973, Ginaton went to Joseph Boy's home. After reading the doorbell, um, his wife, Boy's wife, um, opened the door and said that her husband was out of town for several days. Ginaton partner photographed him kneeling in front of the door of Boy's house. So this is a work of art of 1973. This is part of his collection of the artists. You see in the Vitinaton, one of the influential um, um, artists of the 70s, Ashkenazi uh, origin, uh, kneeling in front of the big door of Joseph Boy's house in Düsseldorf, Germany. It is interesting to examine how, how Ginaton positioned himself in front of the closed door of Boy's house. When it comes to the size ratio, ratios, the young artist appears small in size, and it's almost disappearing in front of the massive, large door, right? You see the massive, large door, and it's so small, almost uh, half of the, even less than half of the door, maybe third, of course. He kneels like an a, admirer of a holy person, and while he lowers himself, he is looking up as if at a holy past or a coveted hero. Ginaton kneels outside of the door frame in sense of a frame represents a high German art wall to which he cannot enter. Therefore, Ginaton has no choice but, the, but to admire and reverence. Dr. Kobi May concludes that this admiration is a sign of pagan fetishism. If we go back to the first part of my interpretation of the artistic work of Joseph Sassoon Zemach, we will find the real man behind boys, the soldier, the Nazi soldier, the oppressor, who manipulates through his needs in order to transform himself into the voice of the oppressed. When we observe the kneeling of Ginaton in front of Boy's door, we get a distorted image. How is it possible that the Israeli Jewish artists, most of them second generation to the Holocaust, Ashkenazi by origin, Ashkenazi European Jews, I mean, <coughs> Yeah, son and daughters of the survivors are kneeling in front of Joseph Boyes and not the other way around. Only 30 years after 1945, Boyes transformed, transformed himself into an extraordinary identity which somehow forced them to forget about his real past actions. David Kinaton testifies that through this picture and others, he sought to clarify the relationship between the Israeli art and the international art and to discuss the question of influence and appropriation. In this photograph, the Israeli artist reveals himself as inferior to the European art, high art as part of a central and peripheral relationship both influence and influ in, both influential and influenced. So he's the periphery, and this is the, the, the center that he kneels in front, right? So he's the Israeli kind of symbolize Israel, this little Israel from Asia, and he's kneeling in front of this big hero temple. In his artistic work, Joseph Sassoon Zemach removes the veil and demystifies this distorted image and identity. Joseph Sassoon Zemach is both European Amsterdam-based artist and post-Israeli one. In having this dual identity, he raises critical questions directed at the backbone of the German and European art. We discussed it before as he writes 
the letter to Durer, the Albrecht Durer, and at the same time he directs his artistic critical gaze towards the Israeli Jewish field of art in which he belonged before leaving Israel. He's, he questions the reasons for the admiration that burdens on self cancellation. And I prepared to you also a few answers of myself, not only to uh, uh, maybe to give you also insight to what I believe or right is my reading of, of, of this picture and, and also the work of, of, of the question that maybe uh, Joseph Sassoon uh, Tzema has to, uh, to Ginaton. Um, there are several answers that I can give you as a commentator con concerning this distorted relationship of the Israeli world towards the image of Joseph Boyce. First, the Israeli militarism subconsciously is being connected to the figure of the German soldier, which is Boyce, the German soldier, in which the Israeli admiration towards the Israeli soldier is evident. Second, the insult by the Ashkenazi survivors of the European descent from Europe. Yes, the same Europe that annihilated their families became a phantasmatic desire to be accepted by them. Third, there is an element of imagined return to ethnic hierarchies that existed before World War II, in which Europe Germans were above all, and the ASEAN, ASEAN, right? Once ASEAN was a curse in Israel, the, when they say to somebody you are Asiati, it's a curse, although they live in Asia, right? Um, that is a perverted, per peripheral and center relation that recur in the minds of Ginaton as a symptom to the position of the Israeli art relation to the European art. Now, I don't want to uh, leave you only uh, uh, without any examples. I'll give you a big example of this hierarchy that I'm talking about. You know Hannah Arendt, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody is educated? Okay, so um, let me uh, read you um, what she writes to uh, um, a friend, the philosopher um, Jaspers, after uh, 1961, uh, after the Eichmann trial in, in Jerusalem. Her description of the crowd at the courthouse, right? In the letter that she sends to Karl Jaspers, passes behind the condescension into the outright racism. Now I quote, on top, the judges, the best of German Jews, below them, the prosecuting attorneys, Galicians, but still European. Every, every, below the, uh, every, everything is organized by the police force that gives me creeps, speaks only Hebrew, and looks Arab. Some downright brutal types among them. They will obey in any order, and outside the doors, the Oriental mob, as if we are in Istanbul or some other half. Asiatic country. That's, that's it what Hannah Arendt wrote about the Eichmann trial in a letter that was presented to us um, in her, after her death. And you can see it of the Germans sitting outside, they are the judges of Eichmann, then the Galicians, they are the, the attorneys, then the Arab Jews, which is also the families that we come from, uh, uh, Joseph Sasson Selat and me, um, from all Arab, the Jews who look like Arabs but speak Hebrew and outside the Asiatic mob. So this is the hierarchy that they're going back to, and this is one reading of me. So let me conclude the, the words, and we can go into the talk, because I don't want to talk too much, and I want to, to hear also to ask questions uh, um, the, from the artist Joseph Sassoon Sema today. So Joseph Sassoon Sema's gaze is a double one. It's a double gaze. It resembles the double face of the Janus, the god of gates. On one hand, he deconstructs and demystifies the admiration of the Israeli artist to Joseph Boyce. On the other hand, his artistic war, criticizing and unmasking the work of Joseph Boyce and the old European canon. He also uses all biblical knowledge. Don't forget that he's a grandson of the last rabbi of Baghdad. And of course, I told you already about the Talmudic walk that goes in. You can see it on, on his walk today when you uh, go down, you can see the, the, the reading of the, the, the European canon by his work, sometimes in Hebrew and English, and with all this art in, me, in the middle. He deconstructs and demystifies the admiration of the Israeli artist to Joseph Boyce. So the other end is artistic work, criticizing and unmasking the work of Joseph Boyce and the whole European canon. Um, so his heart is also living tradition and performance that's very much inspired by the Jewish tradition. 
in order to represent and reperform a new artistic, social, political, spiritual, and geographical order between his Babylonian Jew Jewish point of view and his temporary place, Amakom, both towards the German art and the Israeli art. Thank you very much. <laughs>